a great day to be at the office. I am the office worker and I'm here to help. Today we're going to do some Excel. I didn't want you guys thinking that all I knew was Word because that's all the videos I have so far. So we're going to dive into some Excel now. Microsoft Excel 2016. So I wanted to kind of just start us off with a little bit of the basics but it's some things that a lot of people don't know really how Excel works because it's a little different than Word. So here's your Excel screen. You have all these boxes which are called cells, C-E-L-L. -L. You have these letters up top. These are your column headings. Remember columns go up and down just like the columns that are in front of the White House. Same idea. All the numbers down the side here are your row headings and rows go side to side. Okay. When you click on a letter, it will select an entire column. If you click on a number, it selects the entire row. This corner right here, next to the A and 1, will select everything in your workbook now, or worksheet, I'm sorry. When you open up a new file in Excel, that is a workbook. If you look up top, it says workbook 1. And that is what it will be called until you call it something else. So when you save your file, you give it a name. Workbook 1 will change to whatever name you give it. Each workbook has sheets in it. This screen right here is Sheet 1. Look at the bottom of your screen, it will show you Sheet 1. So think of like a real book. A real book has pages to it or sheets of paper in it. Same idea here. This workbook has sheets in it. You can add sheets to it by clicking on the plus sign. Now I have sheet 2, sheet 3, and so on. You just keep clicking however many sheets you need. It will always start you off with one. You might need more than that. Each sheet could have something different in it. So when you select this corner here, it's going to select the entire worksheet. Now if I zoom way out, zooming way, way out, Keep going. Ah, whoop, oh, going too far. Sorry. So you can see your whole, well, <laughs> your worksheet really just keeps on going. Believe it or not, this is still one worksheet. It is really so far zoomed out, you can't even see the letters or numbers, but there are actual rows here. There's one. So I'm going to zoom back. Oops, see, look at that amount. I was on row 230. It does keep going. So I'm going to go back home. Go back home. Oh, I don't have a home on my keyboard. That's weird. I will just go back home the old fashioned way. Let's do it this way. We'll scroll up this way. There we go, A1. Now I'm going to stay zoomed in so that you can see really well what I'm doing. But up top here you have on your home tab all different tools. We're going to talk about some of them. Um, then you have your insert, your page layout, your formulas, because Excel is a lot about numbers and therefore you're going to have formulas just like with math. 1 plus 1 equals 2. That's a formula. So you can put in formulas in Excel. That'll be in a later video. Data, review, we can put comments in, um, view, and, and that's it for Excel. So we're going to talk about home. Now a lot of this is exactly the same as you would see in Word or PowerPoint, Publisher, things like that, all the Microsoft programs. Uh, or even some other programs, as a matter of fact, will have the same idea, like the bold, italics, underline. But working with Excel, it's gonna some of the things are going to be done a little differently than in other programs, so I wanted to show you. To type in a box, you do not have to create a text box. You just make sure you've clicked on the box you want to type in, and you start typing. If I click over here, and there I am. So when I'm typing, I'm in like an edit mode. Okay, so I'm see that line is flashing, my insertion point. Okay. 
Now, once I click out of it or hit the enter key or the tab key, that's gonna take me out of that edit mode and put me in a different cell. I just hit enter just now, it brought me down. If I hit tab, it brings me over, okay? If I click, well then it just goes wherever you click. It doesn't matter where it is. Now you will see that hello my name is looks like it's going into this cell right here. Now each cell has a name. Just like each column has a name, there's column A, column B, row one, row two. Well each cell, each box has a name. This one right here is A1. It's always the column first, then the row. Down over here. D5. Okay. Now, if you look right up here in this corner here, it tells you exactly where you're at. So I could click here, look over here, and see F8. F8. Okay. So once again, it looks like this is "Hello, my name is" is going into column or, or cell C1, but it really isn't. If I click on C1, which I have just done, and I start typing. Let's see, I'll say, okay. I typed today's weather is in C1. If you look up top here, it tells you exactly what is in your cell. It looks like it went on top of B1. That text looks like it disappeared, right? But it, it hasn't. It's just underneath what is in C1. See, hello, my name is, is still here if you look up top. The problem is, your column width is not wide enough to show it. So if you come up in between the column B and C, this line right here, you'll see your mouse pointer goes from a black arrow to a double arrow. You click and drag out a little bit, and you just keep going until you need to stop. It will be wide enough to show everything. Same thing here. Now another way you can do it, and you don't have to be in the cell to do this. I could be way over here and still work with this column over here. But another way to make your column wide enough is to double click. Double clicking on this line will make your column as wide as the widest thing in your column. So you have hello here and you have today's weather is. Well the widest thing in this column is today's weather is. So it will make the column C that wide. I'm going to double click and now it's as wide as this. It's not going to be as wide as hello because that's not the widest thing in there. I can double click here. It'll make it a little bit smaller but it still fits everything in. So let's talk about some of the things up top here. Your cut, copy, and paste. Remember cut is going to take something and literally cut it with scissors out of it and then you paste it someplace else. So you're moving this, uh, this item, whether it's text or whatever. Um, it could be a graphic. So this is text. We're going to cut it. Now it looks kind of funny. It looks like it's still there and it's got this funny little um, flashy line around it. Makes me think of my migraines. <clears throat> and I'm going to click over here and we're going to now paste it and now it's gone from here and it has moved over to here to E6. If I want to copy it, you once again make sure you've clicked on it. And the way you know that you've got it selected is because this green box around it, which your screen might have a different color, mine is green. But you'll see a box around it. You're going to click copy. Once again we have that funny looking flashy line around it. Flashy dashed line. But this time the hello is dark. It's not light like it was before. Now I'm going to click back over here and I'm going to paste. And now we've made a copy of it. So now there's two of them. Now there's still a flashy line because it thinks, well, maybe you want to paste it in more than one place. Maybe you want more than one copy. That's okay. Let's pretend we do. There's another one and another one. Now to get rid of this, I'm just going to click my, or not click, but um, press my escape key. The escape key is usually in the top left corner of your keyboard. So you just do that and it gets rid of that flashy. It stops the copy pro and process. Copy process <laughs> in its tracks. So now we are not able to continue what we're doing here. So format. 
this is your format painter. If I were to change, well, let's do this. We'll, we'll work on some of this formatting here and then we'll come back to format painter so I can explain better what it does. But it basically will copy the formatting of the text so you can paste it to other text. So let's talk about hello my name is and we can make it B which is bold. I is italics. Now bold is just making it darker. Italics makes it slanted. Underline. Well that kind of self-explanatory but it underlines it. Now there's different types of underline. You can have a single underline or a double underline. Maybe you really want to emphasize something. And like I said with Excel it's a lot about numbers and formulas. Sometimes you want to put a double underline underneath like the total now we've done some stuff here to this and let's say we want today's weather is to look the same now we could just click on here and click 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 and it'll look the same but to save time if you're doing this a lot maybe we want all of our hellos to look the same well instead of clicking and doing all these clicks clicking here doing all these clicks clicking here and maybe you have other things done to it like we have a font maybe done to it and our font size is a little different. Let's double click here so we can see it all. Okay. That's a lot that we did to this. We don't want to have to do all those clicks with each and everything that we want to change. So what you're going to do is you're going to make sure you have it selected by clicking once on it. Click on the Format Painter. Now if we're doing it more than once, we're going to double click on Format Painter. Clicking once is good for one thing, but then it turns it off. Double-clicking ensures that it will stay on until you turn it off. So now we're going to click on Hello. The Format Painter is still on. The dotted line is still around it, saying that it's it's still in process, in progress. Sorry. I'm going to keep clicking on all the things that I want to change. Now I'm done. So I'm going to come back up to Format Painter and click again. It turns it off. Our dashed line is gone and all of our hellos have been changed. Now, we did change our font. I'm just going to show you again that there is a long list from A to Z of fonts. A to Z and more. So, here's our Z and then it kind of started with some other ones. You can change your font. Look how pretty that is. To whatever you like. A lot of times, you it, not a lot of times. Sorry, um, with this list, it'll show you what it will look like with the name of it. When you click on it, then you'll see what it looks like with your text. And you have your font size. Of course, that's just how big it is. How big is your text? Now this is the fun part you have borders the border is going to be around whatever is selected which right now I only have one cell selected there's bottom border so only a line on the bottom of the uh, cell top border is a line along the top left border along the left side of the cell and right border is along the right side then you have no, bo no border which is what we have right now there's no borders it looks like there's a border because you see all these lines. Really, there's not. These lines are just on their grid lines so that you see where the cells are. Under view, you have grid lines. If I click on that, now I have no more lines. Okay, So that's just for you to see on the screen. But if you want this to print out, you need to actually create borders. So that's where this comes in. Then you have all borders. If I had more than one cell selected, I can say that I want all of them to have a border around all the sides of it. Even this one. I mean, it'll just put a box around it. You have um, just outside border. That's also if you have more than one cell selected, only the outside lines will be have a border to it. Thick box. There's a double bottom thick bottom, top and bottom, top and thick bottom, <laughs> top and 
top and double bottom. Okay, down here you can draw your own, and then more borders brings up this box. Now, this box will do pretty much what we just saw in the menu, but you have a little bit more control over where this is going to happen. Right now we have around the whole thing, we can take that off by clicking on this literally right here. If we want it to come back on, you can click over here or you can click here inside the box. Another way to do it, over here you can select what type of line. Maybe I want a really neat looking line. It's kind of a dash line, but it's a really fancy one. I click on the one we, I want, and I come over here and click where I want it to go. I also can choose what the line color will be. Right now, of course, it's black, but maybe I want to be fancy. Yes, I'm going to pick purple because, yes, it's my favorite. Now, if I hit OK, I'm going to have to zoom in probably for you to see it a little better. It is really hard to tell, but that is purple. <laughs> Let me go back in. Oh, you know what? It didn't change it. That's funny. I have to click it. That's the problem. Okay. So now you can really see it's purple. Let me hit OK. Yep, there we go. That's definitely purple. I was going to say, I, it didn't look purple, but I thought maybe it just was and I just wasn't zoomed in far enough. But now I really see. Yes, it is indeed purple. Um, your fill color, this paint can, is the color of the inside of the cell. So maybe I want it green. Whereas the A next to the paint can is your font color. So that is of course the color of your text. So now I have, let's see, it's going to be hard to see that because this up here is hard to see the line, but there is a dashed line up here as well. Okay, you can definitely see the bottom one. Okay, another thing you can do is you can see right now that, let me work with hello. Uh, right now, hello is technically at the bottom part of this cell, which is kind of hard to see that. So here's what I'm going to do. Oops, I'm going to zoom back out a little bit. Just like your column width can be changed, your row height can be changed. If you go in between the numbers the, to your double arrow and click and drag, now we can see a little better. Hello is in the bottom part of the cell and it's in the left part of the cell. Coming up here, this has to do with where your text is positioned inside the cell. Right now you can see it's bottom aligned. I could make it top aligned, now it's at the top, or I can make it in the middle. Right below that are your standard alignment tools. Left align, which is where it's at right now. Middle, or centered. And then right align. Okay. If I want it just to be in a little bit, I click my indent. Indent, indent, indent. It just kind of tabs it in a little bit. However far you want it. Now, of course, if you're going to go that far, you may as well just click your center button and put it in the center. <laughs> but whatever you want to do. Oops, sorry, right clicked there. Let's go back over to left align. This one increases your tab, so it puts the tabs in there, or the indent. This one decreases it, so it takes it away. This is your orientation of your text. So if I want to have it at an angle, that looks really neat, or maybe a different kind of angle. Vertical text, now the problem with that one is we have to double click here so we can see all of it. There we go. <clears throat> then you have rotate text up, so it's, it's still kind of vertical, but it's um, or basically you just tilt your head to see it. Rotate text down, same idea, but the other direction. Vertical text is just where it's literally vertical, so you don't have to tilt your head to read it. Now, if you have a lot of text and you don't want to have it so the 
column width so big, you can do what's called wrap text. And it's going to take your text and wrap it in there so that it stays within that cell. Then you have, let me zoom out a little bit, then you have your merge and center. Now right now it's grayed out, can't do anything with it, and that is because I need to select more than one cell. And I cannot have text in all the cells that I select. I can have text in one of them, but not more than one. When I go to select, I'm going to go to the middle part of the cell where I have that white plus sign. I'm going to click and drag what it is I want to select. It looks like this first cell did not get selected because it's white, whereas everything else is gray. Do not worry. It is selected. You need to look at the box that's around it. You'll notice that the box goes all around even this first cell. That means it is indeed selected. Now, if I select all this, I cannot merge and center. Alert! Don't do it. Right? More than that, you can't do it. It contains multiple data values, meaning there's more than one cell with text in it. And you cannot, it's only going to keep the upper leftmost data. So if I hit OK, it's only going to keep my hello. So I don't want to do that. When I merge and center something, it's because I want to have the text that's in one of the cells be merged with all the other cells. So it's going to take all these cells and make it one gigantic cell. And it will also center whatever text is there. You can also do it a different way. You can, oh, let me do it with this hello. You can, if you click the down arrow, you can merge across, you can merge cells, or you can unmerge, which of course I can't unmerge right now because there's nothing merged. Up here though, there's something merged. So if I had this selected, I could unmerge it. So if I merge, it merges them all together. Now it's one big gigantic cell, but hello stayed where it was. It did not center it. Merge across, oh. merge across. It's hard to see because we don't have text in there. Merge across. There we go. So see, you can tell with the grid lines that it's one gigantic cell. One gigantic cell, little bitty cell. One gigantic cell, little bitty cell. One gigantic cell, <laughs> and so on. So that is your merge and center. And just merge because sometimes you don't want to have it centered, your text. You can center it afterwards. That's just an extra step, but you can do it that way. Now, that was a lot of information. So I'm going to stop here, I think. And I will dive more into other things later, like your dollar signs and formulas and, whew, yeah, page layout and all that fun stuff. Inserting, you can insert pictures, shapes, oh my goodness, charts. There's so much you can do in Excel. I love Excel. So, this is good for now, I think. If you like what you uh, saw here, please click the like button. Leave a comment down below if you want to see something specific in Excel, and I will do that next. Also, if you have tried any of these things and it helped you, leave a comment. Let me know if I helped you at all. Don't forget to click that subscribe button so that uh, you will know exactly when the next video is going to come out. I'm trying to stick to a schedule of Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, but um, you just never know. So clicking that subscribe button will definitely tell you when my next video is coming out. Thank you so much for watching and have a nice day.